when Ivan actually first made the decision to venture into the Fios investment, a 20 plus billion dollar investment, most of the thinking that's gotten us to this day was already present at that point. Uh, and we've had employees that have had these kinds of speeds and even more um, uh, in their homes, uh, quite jealous of some of them. Um, um, and really what we see is initially it's probably most relevant to, to small and medium businesses. Uh, there are certainly power users out there. And the most common question I get is, you know, what could you possibly do with all of that speed? And folks are really looking for that one killer application that really pushes it over the top. And we tend to think about it much more about the uh, getting rid of the opportunity costs around the broadband connection. So this happens in my house, even with the high speeds I have of, I'm doing something and my wife wants to do something and us having to make trade-offs, um, you know, trying to video conference with grandma at the same time that I'm trying to, to stream or download something very large. On smaller connections, you have to make these compromises. The video quality on the video conference goes down or your, your speeds on the downloads get reduced. So we really think about it as beginning to enable um, applications being running simultaneously in the home without trade-offs. And our hope of bringing it to market at this point for consumers is to really spur on the application development to take advantage of this bandwidth. It's, it's a chicken and egg issue. The content providers and the application developers talk about, if I only had, I would do these things. And then on the other side, consumers saying, I would sign up for this if I only had those applications and those capabilities. And so to a certain extent, these bigger speeds are really not necessarily because consumers are clamoring saying, I need these, um, these massive pipes into my homes, but more trying to break that chicken and egg, find that bed for innovation. And as that innovation catches on, then also then circle back and drive that consumer demand. So what is the capacity of the network now? How fa I mean, you guys have cranked it up. How, how high can you crank it if you wanted to? Uh, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the of the whole fiber story is we started out at uh, BPON was the name of the technology on the access network. So passive optical network is the PON acronym. And the current technology we're shipping second generation is called GPON. So GPON from BPON, it was 622 megabits for about 24 to 32 homes. GPON cranked that up, same glass, the vast majority of the network remained the same, which is the most exciting part of being very extensible to 2.6 gig. Last year around this time, we announced uh, that we had begun working on the XPON technology, which takes that up to 10 gig for um, 24 to 32 premises. Um, the one that comes after that a few years into the distance, but is already up and starting to work in the labs, is called DWDM PON. And uh, that is 10 gig down and 10 gig up per house or per premise. And you know, I, what are you gonna do with that? I mean, the, the question is, we're not quite sure yet, but we know just like when you buy that computer and you say, wow, a one terabyte hard drive, I'm never going to fill this up. You turn around a few months later and you're like, wow, I, I filled that up. And so I, we love that, that beautiful evolution and that beautiful future proofing. And there's actually theoretical speeds on the same glass that go even beyond that.